Hey, what's up, everybody? Video 44 coming at you in another video. All right, so we're talking Lakers again. Obviously, we got another basketball game to play. It's been about three days since we had the Westbrook uh, LeBron shooting uh, debacle. And I'm not just saying Westbrook. I'm putting Ron in there, too, because I haven't forgotten about the shots he threw up there that were pretty awful as well. So guys were just throwing possessions away, playing hard defense, and then throwing possessions away on the offensive side. And uh, it cost us a basketball game. That's, that's what it comes down to. Body language was bad. We discussed it. From the jump of the game, I saw body language wasn't where it needed to be. And it just, it just you know, went spiraling from there. Guys definitely put up great statistical numbers. So a lot of people will listen to what I have to say and not really uh, consider it. Because LeBron's numbers were spectacular. Uh, but he was a plus two. You know what I mean? A situation where it's like, okay... It shows there were some things there that, that weren't exactly stellar, despite him having phenomenal numbers. Uh, Anthony Davis had six blocks. Stephen A. Smith got on TV and said, you know, he shot 20% from three. Everybody, he's shooting better than the team. You know, in most days I'm like, yo, AD, shooting 20%, what the heck? Team's shooting 16, is it 18% on the year? He's above the fray. What I'm going to do, scold them for being better than the rest of them? Everybody sucks shooting three. We're not going to hang our hat on guys missing the three-point shot this season. We expect to miss every single three-point shot we attempt. It's good for the mind. Acceptance. So we're going to say that right there. We ain't mad at nobody for not hitting the three. Now, at this point, what we do need to do is lean on our strengths. Defense and interior scoring. Because while we suck shooting the ball... Where much isn't on one side, much is on another. And that is exactly what we have, an extreme strength that the Lakers have not really discovered yet because they're too busy focused on the weakness. But you follow BDF 44, so we found the strength. It ain't just defense. It's scoring in the paint. We can score at will. I believe the Lakers can legitimately score 120 points in the paint if they really intend on doing so. Because they score at an above average amount of points in the paint on top of the above average amount of three-point shots that we're attempting that are not even going in. So if you take those three-point shots that we're missing and turn them into more attempts in the paint, which we're connecting on, you'll probably break some records breaking, you know, scoring in the paint. But the Lakers are too focused on what they can't do to appreciate what it is that they're doing very well. So this is a situation where I'm just hoping everybody can get out of their feelings in the locker room and send Russell Westbrook home, even though I do think he will probably hurt that interior scoring if we do that. But ultimately, his... His presence has made it so that the body language on LeBron is bad, and I think his LeBron's body language being bad is now boomerang back to Russell Westbrook's focus in, in body language being bad, and I think that is exactly what we saw in that game. And that's exactly what I saw. And I don't know what y'all saw, but that's what I saw. <laughs> and my thing is, y'all both can sit out. Let them both sit. If neither one of them want to come to play in the afternoon, that's fine. Y'all both been played um, a combination of 39 years in this league or whatever, how many years it's been y'all played together. If y'all don't want to play on a Saturday, on a third, on the Sunday afternoon game, sit out. DNP it, but don't come in there throwing away possessions. You know what I mean? Taking away minutes that we could be giving to young players. You're gonna lose anyway. You're gonna freaking lose anyway. So that's that's my attitude. I'm I'm, I'm highly irritated with the stars on this team because I want them to have a much higher uh, appreciation for what it is their responsibility is this year. Just because we have a losing style. Right now does not mean that we have a right to put on a uniform and throw possessions away. You know who wore this uniform? You don't have a right to do that. So that's where I'm at with it. I can accept that from players that don't know how to play. I can accept that from players who aren't here with us. But I ain't going to accept that from GOATs. I'm not going to do that. So that's, that's what I have to say, man, as far as that's concerned. Now let's get into the game. <laughs> the Denver Nuggets have made some pretty interesting changes to their roster. Um, and they got some players coming back from injury that I think are going to be very noteworthy. Uh, Kevin Porter Jr., one of the best catch-and-shoot basketball players in all of the world right now. Um, and when he gets his mobility back, he's going to be able to do a lot more than that. But for right now, he's just basically parking it and shooting it, and we have to be aware of him. Now, I hear he's day-to-day, -day, but um, yeah, he, we'll see. We'll see if he's available tonight. Um, another player, obviously, we got to pay attention to is Jamal Murray, uh, one of the coldest uh, killers in all of the league. Definitely somebody who can drop 50 on you when his conditioning is correct. All from behind the arc and jump shots. He, he's just one of the best at that. Um, and he, he can play make some as well. So we have to keep the clamps on him and understand he's going to do a lot of dancing and a lot of shooting. Um, and it's one of those situations where 
I don't know if his condition is where it needs to be to where we need to take him as seriously if we're going to by the end of the season, but we do need to keep a very, very close eye on him. Um, another guy that I think that's very important on this team, uh, on their bench, is a guy by the name of Bruce Brown, who played with the Brooklyn Nets last year. Comes in, and he's going to be one of the first guys off the bench. Uh, someone who loves to attack. Someone who loves to get in the paint, just like we do, and score at the rim. He loves doing that. He's going to continue to attack you in minutes, and he's somebody we need to keep an eye on. Another guy on that bench that I think is pretty interesting is Ish Smith. Every time Ish Smith goes anywhere, he loves to kill the Lakers when he's given minutes. It doesn't matter what uniform he's in, and usually it's a different uniform because he's been on 100 teams. But every time, he's killing us. So I would advise the Lakers to keep an eye on Ish Smith. If he checks in the game, know that his confidence goes up when he sees purple and gold. Um, another guy that, that has been listed as day-to-day, -day, but I expect we'll probably see him, is Jeff Green. I'm surprised Jeff Green ain't never played for the Lakers. That's one of the things I'm really surprised by. We've always had rumors of Jeff Green possibly coming to the Lakers. He's always rumored to go to the team that Bron goes to, but has never played for the Lakers. But he's played for everywhere else, and now he's with the Denver Nuggets. Still jamming on people's heads. I don't know how he's able to get off the ground like he's still 19 years old, but to this very second, he's jamming on people like that. Um, and so we have to keep an eye on him. He can obviously stretch the floor, rebound the ball. Everybody knows Jeff Green. Um, so... Obviously, Jokic is the main uh, focus of the Denver Nuggets. Everybody knows that. Uh, Nikola Jokic, two-time consecutive MVP. And uh, somebody who's going to average a triple-double most most of the time, basically. He's going to be very close to a triple-double at all times. And this last game, he got in some foul trouble um, and still almost had a triple-double. But here's the thing. He got in foul trouble. What does that tell me? That means he got rest. He sat. He wasn't doing too much playing. He's probably well-rested for us tonight. That's not good at all. That is not good. A well-rested joke, which means that we're going to have to deal with a lot. And judging by the fact that we can't stretch the floor, we're going to be coming at him. So he's a much better defender than he's been given credit for. In fact, he's one of the best defenders in all of basketball. And you're going to see exactly what type of intangibles he brings to the table on that side of the floor. He doesn't get enough credit on that side of the floor. But if you look at the stats, he contributes every night. And he does have a pretty solid defensive team a lot of the time. But... Against the Portland Trailblazers, they got blown all the way out. And from what I understand, that first quarter, they really didn't play any defense at all. So we need to try to attack them. Anthony Simons had a fantastic game against the Denver Nuggets in this past game, and so did Dame Lillard. They both lit him up from behind the arc. So what this tells me, the Lakers are going to have all kinds of open shots tonight because this team is bad at guarding the perimeter. Unfortunately, that doesn't help us at all. We can't shoot, so it doesn't matter. So it's going to be an interesting type of game tonight, but I do think it's for some reason... The Los Angeles Lakers are able to hit three-point shots. We may be able to take advantage of something tonight. Uh, but the problem is I think trying to attempt those same shots is probably ill-advised just in and of itself. So 18 is the maximum, that I, as I said, that I want my team to shoot. And um, we're probably going to double that. We're probably going to double that. So hopefully I'm wrong there. Uh, another player you got to pay attention to when you're talking about the Denver Nuggets is Bones Highland. Coming off of their bench rookie last year who was really, really talented. Somebody who can dance on you. He's definitely somebody who loves to put the ball on the floor, shoot from the mid-range, attack the basket, all of those different things he loves to do. Get out in the open court off of, off of turnovers. He'll force a steal on you. Definitely somebody who's wiry, who you will, deal, ha will have to deal with. <laughs> so I, I have my eye open in regards to that particular player. And with Will Barton now in Washington and a few other pieces now off the team, uh, more minutes for him. More more minutes there. Um, another player that I've had in mind for the Denver Nuggets I've been keeping an eye on is a rookie that they just picked up by the name of Christian Braun. And I know at any moment they're going to give him some minutes and he's going to break out. And I'm worried that that will be tonight against us. So keep an eye on Christian Braun. He's a high-level rookie that they picked up uh, somewhere at the end of the first round. And he's been doing a lot of good things with the little minutes that he's been given to the point where he's almost fantasy relevant without any real minutes. So that tells me He's on the verge of making a name for himself, and guys love to do that damn stuff against the Lakers. Christian Braun, on their bench, will probably be a problem for us. Keep an eye on him. Who else? Uh, they got a lot of players on that team. Oh, Aaron Gordon. Yo, Aaron Gordon has turned back into Orlando Aaron Gordon over the last couple games. He's balling, balling. He is much more wiggly. He's in much better shape than he was last year. He fits in their offense. It seems a bit better. He's more comfortable next to Jokic than he's ever been. And I think Aaron Gordon is well on his way to rekindling some of that star power. 
if he could stay healthy and continue the energy that he's playing with on this team right now. I think he put up 26 points in the last game. He's got it. He's got the pop. He's found, he's found his offense. So for him, it was about can he fill the role that they needed him to play last year? Because for me, it was like he was replacing Jeremy Grant. And even though he's a good defender, that's not, that's not who you want to try to fill the shoes of if you're him. This role, I think he's more back to playing like he was in Orlando, more free to shoot shots, more free to kind of focus on his offensive side of the game. And I think he's a better bucket getter than he's been given credit for in Denver. So if they're going to incorporate him more so into their office than they have been, and he's going to look like he is right now, uh, we could be looking at him making them a contender uh, his damn self if he continues playing this way. So uh, they can withstand Porter and, and Murray trying to get back in shape if he's going to step up and play like this. So if we're going to keep our eye on anybody, I think Aaron Gordon would be somebody to start. He, you start there because he's hot right now. He's on fire. So these are the type of things I'm looking at. Um, in regards to the Denver Nuggets, uh, God, there's somebody else on that team I should be mentioning, and it's not coming to mind. But at the end of the day, uh, this is a Denver Nugget team whose defense is suspect, uh, but whose superstar is is the very best right now in terms of your MVP. That's him. The last two years. So if you think for one second that he's not going to have confidence against our struggling team. Yeah, he's probably going to try to do a lot of great things to us tonight, and it's not going to be pretty if we do not get him in foul trouble. The Lakers have had a very, very tough time with seeing the fruit and getting centers in foul trouble as of late. The Golden State Warriors had their bigs on the floor the whole time. The Clippers kept Zubats out there to have fun, and the Blazers were also able to have a very, very long, comfortable game with Yusef Nurkic. Um, so my thing is the Lakers need to understand that a lot of these teams do not have centers. Um, outside of the Denver Nuggets having Jokic in place, I expect that they still have Boogie in place as well. I don't know if he's still on the roster. It's not or not. Uh, but but regardless of that being the dynamic here, against the Blazers and against the Clippers, we had a chance to basically blow the game wide open if we could have just got that center out of the paint. And the Lakers coaching staff and the players just did not see that angle at all and I just I'm very disappointed with what I've been seeing from the strategy of Darvin Ham I know we're obviously only three games into the regular season obviously there's a lot to learn it's an unorthodox roster the pieces don't fit Russ Brook three-point shooting non-existent all of that stuff works against him but I just want to see some common sense on top of all these problems because we have so many natural problems we need our coach not to do things like put Lonnie Walker on Dame Lillard down the closing seconds of a basketball game or to sub Russell Westbrook back into a basketball game that we're winning in when you know what his struggles are. You know, these are the type of things it's like, if you're not going to do things to help the team, we're going to start looking at you as the problem. And just like we did Frank Vogel, we'll bash you every night on this channel, bro. I am not opposed to calling out coaches nightly, bro. So that's my thing. It's like I'm, I'm, I'm going to give a lot of patience to Darvin Ham. I like Darvin Ham. I'm happy he's here. But the stuff that I'm seeing, I don't know if I want to give him a rookie pass for some of these mistakes. Some of these mistakes are inex inexplicable, inexplicable, unexcusable. I don't care if you're a rookie or not. I don't care if you're a kid playing video games. You do not do some of the stuff that we've been seeing the Los Angeles Lakers attempt to do. When you're the worst three-point shooting team, arguably in the history of the sport, through two games, you are not going to be averaging more than 43s. You got to limit your threes to a reasonable weight. And cutting it down from 45 to 38 or whatever the hell we did is not enough. 18 is what I'm suggesting, and I think that's reasonable. Judging by how the fact that we can't single, we can't seem to make a single one up. <laughs> and this type of stuff, man. Common sense is very important. And in the midst of turmoil, we need our coach to engage in that for us. So that the matchups we have match up in size, so that the circumstances we got going down there don't play into the defensive hands. And so ultimately we have an opportunity to win basketball games. You know what I'm saying? If we're not doing that, then we need to blow this tire thing up and get ourselves some picks and lose for a purpose. Period. Because this no man's land, I'm kind of good, but I'm really not garbage, is going to keep us bad for a very long time. And that's just the bottom line. So that's where I'm at with that. Um... Now, as far as players, unfortunately, Cole Swider. Got to talk about the stress fracture. He's going to be out for a little bit. Got to heal up from that. I don't know how long it's going to take, but that's a major setback for us, needless to say. We can't shoot. He's our best, second-best shooter, and he's out. Um, of course, 
uh, we, we got to talk about uh, the fact that there are other players as well. Thomas Bryant, out. Uh, Dennis Schroeder, out. We know that. Russell Westbrook will be doubtful tonight. Um, so I don't know that we'll see Russell Westbrook again. I'm very hopeful that he will not be returning to our team, um, period. I think that the doubtful uh, next to his name in this game tells me that there's a chance that Genie is finally seeing the fruit and possibly doing that and is mulling over it. I'm hopeful that's what that means because I do not, in my heart of heart, think there's anything wrong with him physically. I do not. <laughs> that's what I'm going to tell you guys. I don't believe that. You take it for what it's worth, probably nothing. Now, um, as we go forward, obviously, this basketball game tonight, we know for a fact that we're not favored to win it. I'm not going to sit up here and tell you guys we're favored to beat those guys. They have more talent on their floor than we do right now from more angles, obviously. Uh, but I know that Walker is a player that we can use tonight to our advantage. Dame and Simons were able to dance on them all night long from what I was out from what I was able to read. They could not guard the one-on-one -on -one to save their entire life. We're not a one-on-one -on -one team, but that is something we need to try to see if we can exploit tonight. Walker's probably the best version of that for us and that I can think of. I don't look at our team as someone who has as a team that has a bunch of dancers on it, but if we had that one-on-one -on -one break them down talent this is the night to put him on uh, their, their floor and let him go and let him go. I would say it would be Kendrick Nunn, but his play as of late has really um, soured my enthusiasm for seeing him on the basketball floor. Uh, it's just too hot and cold, man. I don't like players that give me 30 on one night then six the next. Like I can't deal with that level of inconsistency because I don't know what you're going to give me. I don't know if I'm making a mistake for playing you or not. And when it's that bad, it's like, I can't use you. You know what I mean? That's how I feel about players who have that level of inconsistency to where one night they're a superstar, the next night they're a scrub. I don't know what to do with you, bro. I don't know if you're going to have it tonight. I pull, like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if you're going to have it that night or not. So as far as I'm concerned, he's out. Got to move on from him. Um, Damian Jones, out. Got to move on from him. Like, I don't have patience. I ain't going to pretend to have patience. I'm not going to be nice. I'm going to pray to God and ask for forgiveness instead of asking you guys, uh, to, to, to hear me sugarcoat this nonsense. Those players got to go. They're not good enough to be here in our uniform, period. So we got to win now. And if we had time to develop players and, and have rope for guys who were struggling, I would be all for it. If we could sustain it and still win, keep them all here. Let's all get better together. But we don't have the time for that. We got to get guys in here who are able to deliver immediately. And if they can't do that, then we need to rearrange what we're doing so that we can fit the people who need to develop over time. That means getting rid of Brian, getting rid of AD, getting rid of Westbrook, getting rid of anything but those two picks and bringing more picks on top of those. So that's the only path I accept to losing as a fan. That's the only path to losing I accept. You got to have picks. If you can't give me picks, we got to be winning. There's no either or. So that's, that's, that's the only thing we should accept as Laker fans. That's the only thing Jeannie should accept for paying this luxury tax. And anybody who's suggesting to her or to us that we should accept anything less doesn't have our best interest at heart. With that being said, we cannot see that problem and throw another problem on top of that problem. Acquiring a contract like Gordon Hayward's is exactly that. Just because you have a problem right now and need to shoot does not mean you want to create a problem where you need cap space flexibility and you can't get the player you want next season because of that. You're going to still remember that you supplemented the issue of shooting, and it's going to go wherever it goes. But at the end of the day, we're going to have new wants tomorrow, just like we have wants right now, and we're not going to be able to fix those because of how we fixed these. No. That's why we're in the problem we're in right now. We never knew when to sacrifice something. It's time to sacrifice something. We can be bad right now to assure we're not a lot worse later if that's what it takes. And if Bron's not on board with that, then he's not on board with us. Because that's what's going to make us a good enough team for him to play on in the future. So that's the reality of the situation. And with him signing that extension, that's exactly what he's agreeing to as far as I can tell. Now, I'm still on board with trading those two picks for something that will make us better. But I'm damn sure not on board with trading those two picks for something that will not make us good enough to win a championship this season and bring in more headaches for us to have to undo just like these next season. Nah. I'm tired of mortgaging more problems, foregoing more headaches to get more headaches later. I'm not. That's not. No. 
If you're going to give me aspirin, the aspirin can't initiate a headache 20 hours later. No, I want to make sure that I'm not giving myself any headaches. Not now, not later. That's pretty much where I'm at with that. So, as far as I can tell, the next move needs to be your best move. And if it's the same crap that we've been rejecting in regards to the Indiana Pacers and, and the Charlotte Hornets and all these other teams, if the, if the deals aren't better than what they were, then we need to continue to say no to those deals. But that does not mean you keep Russell Westbrook on this roster. You send him home to his family where he can be in a loving environment away from all these fans that want him gone. We do. So that's what I have to say about everything. I think that sums it all the way up. I expect the Los Angeles Lakers to give me a good fight tonight. And if they embrace the style of play that they have to play, they'll have a chance to win the basketball game. That's a bad defensive team. Take it to their paint, get Jokic in foul trouble, and see if, if Aaron Gordon can stop Anthony Davis. That's, that's what you do. And, and Anthony Davis needs to continue being aggressive as he's been on both sides of the floor. And don't worry about shooting from behind the arc. Don't worry about Stephen A. Smith. Stephen A. Smith ain't playing close enough attention to our team. That's true. He's not paying as close enough. He's not paying as close attention to our team as, as he would if he were a beat writer or something like that who had the team, you know, seeing what AD was actually doing. Uh, so that's what we have to understand. People like myself help, uh, help Stephen A. understand what to look for in regards to our squad. That's just the reality of it. So I, I don't think Stephen A. is too far off in asking AD to shoot better. But I also understand Stephen A. Smith has no idea uh, of all the different stuff that's going on with our roster in detail. So I think AD had one of his best games as a Laker last, and I think he should continue um, to, to feel confident that he's starting the season the right way. I truly believe that. Um, another thing is uh, Troy Brown. We're very happy with Troy Brown. Came in, played some fantastic defense in the last game. A lot of people were kind of concerned about him not being subbed back into the game, but I also know he took kind of a hard fall where someone fell on him and a lot of pressure went on his back as we talked about. So I wasn't mad at us not subbing him back in the game if he was having any complications with the back. If he was not, uh, I think we missed an opportunity, to say the least. And I'm sorry for not bringing it up in the last video. I just didn't think of it. But, yeah, he did a fantastic job defensively. He put a big body on players, and we need that tonight as well against the Denver Nuggets. Guys like Jeff Green, Aaron Gordon. We're going to need him. So I hope he's able to feel great and continue to work uh, with the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, so that's that's what I want to see. That's exactly what I want to see. More Troy Brown. We called back up Max Christie. Excited about that. I made it a point to tell everybody that we are the worst three-point shooting team in the league. And Max Christie has not missed a three-point shot. So I guess it, somebody heard that message and called him back up. Because that's just... You don't want that type of thing floating around for people to actually realize is a thing. <laughs> you own, The only person you want to know that is me. And so I told everybody, and they called him back up for realize that we had actually sent down a player who had shot 100% from three-point arc while being as bad as we are from behind the three-point arc. Anyway, so I'm um, glad we righted that wrong. Um, hopefully we can get him some minutes, and hopefully he'll continue to do what he's been doing. I don't expect him to hit a lot of threes, but I do expect him to give us positionless three-point, I mean positionless ability uh, up and down the roster because I think he can play about three positions. So, yeah, Max Christie is an asset. Please play. Scotty Pippen, please play Scotty Pippen. With with all love and respect for Patrick Beverly, I don't need to see him no more. I don't. I don't see him no more. He needs to continue doing what he's doing on the sidelines to help the team. And when we need somebody to come in and pester defensive offensive players, we come in and have him lock them down with the energy that he can give us for spurts at a time. If we're not using him in spurts, we're misusing what it is that he can give us at this time. Period. We just got to know when a guy is at that point where you got to use him in spurts. He's there. If we think we're going to trot him out like Clippers Patrick Beverly, we're going to find out we're going to wear him out very quickly. Use the younger bodies for that. Period. I'm telling you, man, we got, and we got the guards. It's not like we don't have the guards. We don't have to struggle with our guards. We got plenty of them. Pippen and, and, and Christie and obviously Schroeder when he gets back and Walker, Nunn and, uh, you know, all these guys, man. Reeves, they all our guards so if for some reason a couple guards are struggling sit them down bring in some more and let's keep the ball rolling you know that's that's how i have to say that's exactly what i have to say about that so we're at the kobe minute man you know how we get down here that is it hopefully the lakers can surprise me and get a victory but i ain't putting no money on it and neither should you bdf 44 i thank you all for watching i'm out